What's happening everybody? Trey here joined by my dad Sean and today at Reactions to the Classics we're going to be counting down our uh, top 10, uh, I guess it's really top 20 albums of the decade. We're going to be choosing 10 a piece here, drafting our, uh, our, our top records and uh, at the end we want to hear from you of course in the comments. What are your favorite records from the 2000s and uh, which of these stack of records if you had to choose between my list and Sean's list would you be taking? And uh, we also have decade lists up for the 60s, 70s, yep. 80s, and 90s, along with uh, top 10 album drafts from uh, 1965 all the way up uh, to 2009. So uh, a lot of content uh, for you to pick and choose if you'd uh, like to go back and, uh, um, you know, kind of kind of reminisce. Yeah, exactly. And I, this decade was pretty strong for me, man. Yeah. I didn't know going into it. You know, I thought the music, popular music fell out big time for me towards you know, in the 90s and definitely in the 2000s. But I found a lot of great stuff. So mm. if you've watched in the past, you know, one person goes first and the next person gets two picks, two picks. This one is just old school. Trey's going to get the first pick, then I go, then he goes, I go. Um, so in that, Trey? Yeah. You got first pick. Yeah, and I'm gonna man. This was this was tough because there's it's sometimes tough, right, to compare genres. Like, okay, it what really are you gonna is, choose? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Um, so it was a very tough one, but I'm going um, with uh, the band that I chose first, actually, in my '90s list with OK Computer. Now I'm choosing them for their 2007 record in Rainbows. It's Radiohead right here with their seventh album and uh man i as i was thinking you know you got to really nitpick as what's gonna yeah. get first well i really think this album could be almost like a greatest hits for radiohead you could argue uh of the 10 songs maybe only one could be a, a throwaway in a post arp but even that it's only a little over two minutes and yeah i like the creativity that it does but everything from 15 snaps to uh, body snatchers to maybe my favorite radiohead song reckoner to the uh gorgeous all i need yeah. house of cards jigsaw falling into place videotape baby. videotape I mean, dude, there's seven There's seven of the ten songs right there that I just think are great. Weird Fishes uh, deserves a shout as well. I really think this is Radiohead uh, firing on all cylinders. It is. Just very well might be their best record. Uh, it's kind of a flip of the coin between this and uh, OK Computer for me. And so, uh, man, uh, if you haven't listened to this, be sure to go and do it. And um, we have a, a full review of this record up uh, yeah. up as well. That would have been sky high on my list right now. It's probably not the Radiohead uh, album that other people might have at number one, but you'll get to that later. My number one pick, you stole it from mm. me. I couldn't get it in our album <laughs> draft, but I got it this time. Kanye West, the college dropout, his debut album. Debuted at number two, 441,000 sold. Grammy for best rap album and put Kanye on the map, man. We got the skits. We got all oh, we got Jesus <laughs> Walks through the wire last call. Space ships all falls down. And of course, the iconic oh, yeah. slow jams with Jamie Foxx, but just... Just a fantastic album. Mm -hmm. We got a full review of that one. Up, go check it out. Yeah, man. I, uh, you, you know me. I. Who's your favorite artist? Yeah. yeah, my favorite artist. So that was going to be taken soon because uh, I do think that's his top record from this uh, decade. I do too. Uh, just, just eking out late registration and graduation for me. But me uh, too. I'm going to stick in the same vein here, and I'm, uh, I'm going Jay Z's The Blueprint as my second pick right here. Uh, his sixth record, they beat it once, stayed there for three weeks, preserved in the library of. Con Congress yep. recently again has a lot of that uh, soul based uh, type of production by Kanye. It's funny, we, we, we didn't plan this. No, but, we did uh, not. Uh, I think it has some of Jay Z's best songs on here, not bogged down by features like some of his 90s works are. Uh, Takeover is a Hova, Heart of the City, You Don't Know, Renegade, uh, featuring a great guest verse by Eminem, Song Cry. They're all great. I think it's a, a fantastic record to introduce somebody uh, to hip hop as well. And um, yeah, it's just a, a bona fide, it's a bona fide classic right there. So, um, yeah, giving, giving Hova some love. There you go. My next pick, Arcade Fire Funeral, their debut album. In my opinion, their best album, although a lot of people think Suburbs is. Metacritic said it had the second most appearances on end of decade lists, only behind Radiohead's K.A., mm. not in Rainbows. Neighborhood number one, neighborhood number four, Wake Up and Rebellion uh, are all fantastic. But this album is such a change of pace for music uh, during this time and just oh, yeah. just a fantastic album what do you got at number three yeah man i like i like that funeral pick uh i'm going uh back early to 2000 which uh just might be the best year of this decade in my opinion yeah, uh, we're going man. we're going modest mouse moon and 2006 antarctica but... yeah 06 is loaded too moon and antarctica by modest mouse their third record um and uh, you know modest mouse man really just uh big time pioneers and influencers yeah. of that indie rock um you know uh 
just alternative rock, emo, you know, post hardcore, just kind of everything uh, is uh, blended in there. Isaac Brock's philosophical and astute lyrics are uh, on full display um, with some uh, just really strong searing guitars. And uh, man, this is a this is a personal pick. I mean, it's a very acclaimed record critically, right. but uh, it's probably not going to appear this high on most people. But uh, man, I love me some Modest Mouse. Third Planet, Life Like Weeds, and Lives are uh, highlights for me. All right, my next pick is a man that appears on so many uh, mm -hmm. of our, our yearly lists. We got Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, No More Shall We Part, 11th studio album. Came four years after the uh, Boatman's Call, which is also mm. a fantastic album. He had overcome heroin and alcohol addiction before recording the album, which I always recommend before you record an album, <laughs> you overcome your heroin addiction. Um, it showcases the talents of the Bad Seeds, a lot more elaborate instrumentation mm -hmm. on here. It's not so much about Nick delivering those over-the-top vocals, which he can do, but he also has a fantastic voice when he wants to. And, and I mean, the songs are more straight up. You don't have to try mm -hmm. to figure out what they are. He's got a wider vocal range. Uh, his highlights are As I Sat Sadly by Her Side, one of his best songs. Love Letter. It's 67 minutes long, boys and girls, but you won't notice that. It's fantastic. What do you got, Trey, at number four? Yeah, man. Love me some uh, some Nick Cave. Yeah, there was man. a couple records from his that uh, could have been in contention yes, I agree. for this list. And I agree. Maybe one will pop up at the end. But uh, uh, for the uh, first time, we're going to have an artist uh, appear twice on our list. I'm going with uh, Kanye's Late Registration from 2005, that second record coming off of the college dropout. Yep. Um, uh, again, uh, just really showed that creativity that Kanye had um, and uh, the skits hit here just as they did in the college yeah, dropout. Uh, Touch the Sky, uh, heard him say, Gold Digger, um, even some deeper cuts like Addiction and Roses yeah. uh, and um, Let Me Down are, are some of my favorite Kanye tracks right here, man. Wonderful, wonderful production and uh, shows that, uh, man, Kanye uh, definitely has an, an argument for the artist of the decade here. Yeah, he definitely does. And that would not have made it much longer, Trey. It would have been. Coming up to me soon, but I've got Arctic Monkeys, their debut, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. Became the fastest selling debut album in British history, so let that sink in for a minute. Selling over 360,000 mm. copies in its first week. It remains the fastest selling debut album by a band, seven times platinum, being named the best album in 2006 by Time, winning the Brit Award for Best British Album, 2007 Mercury Prize, Grammy Noms. You get it. Uh, it's just fantastic, guys. 13 songs, but it's only 41 minutes. I bet you will get on the dance floor and when the sun goes down or the highlights room, but it's incredibly consistent and that's what made it rank this high for me. Oh, yeah. This is uh, AM's best record, in my opinion. It shows that charisma of Alex Turner, the the greatness of that rhythm section, you know, being in the midst of that post-punk revival yeah. at this, you know, 2006 period. So um, I, I really like that pick right there, Dad. Looking at my board, I I got, you know, Kanye, Modest Mouse, Jay-Z, Radiohead. We're, we're getting some variety here and we're going to keep that going. You're making your case I, to win this. I, I'm going Daft Punk's Discovery, the second album from the legendary electronic duo. Um, you know, three million copies sold. One of the most fun albums you'll ever hear. I mean, you, you throw this thing on front to back at a party or at a gathering. Yeah. I, I don't think it matters what your musical taste is. People are going to be enjoying it, vibing with it. One more time, aerodynamic, harder, better, faster, stronger, face to face, man. This thing is just loaded with hits and, uh, you know, really in contention for for one of the, the greatest electronic music albums of all time. So if I can nab it here at my fifth pick, I think I got to do it. Well, at my fifth pick, I'm going to go, I'm going to steal this album from you. Yeah. Jay Della Donuts, mm. second album released three days before his death. 29 of the 31 tracks recorded from his hospital room. Masterclass and sampling. Uh, instrumental hip hop has never been uh, mm -hmm. better than this. So, uh, yeah, it's just, just fantastic, Trey. And even if you don't like, don't, don't, don't like, Put it into the hip hop realm. It's just music, man. So even mm -hmm. if you don't like yeah, hip hop that sampling, yeah, just, just go listen to it. It's incredibly interesting. I know you obviously had it on your list. Oh, I would have. You just took it yeah, before I could. The, no, yeah, definitely. I I like that pick right there, man. Uh, Jay Dilla, one of the the, the greatest hip hop producers yeah. uh, of all time. I mean, working on it, Mash, Lightworks. I mean, that that album is just loaded from uh, from start to finish. And yeah, their the songs are almost over before they begin, man. Yeah. Keep that good pace, and uh, I'm gonna keep kind of in that um, more. 
underground uh, hip hop realm. And I'm going a mad villain. Uh, they're mad villainy. Uh, this is a record of a collaboration between Mad Lib, again, one of the great hip hop producers of all time, with one of the great uh, rappers of all time, MF Doom. Uh, make sure you put it in all caps, people. Uh, this is uh, an underground cult favorite, man. Uh, this really shows, I think, too, um, that the power of the internet in uh, yeah. this time period as well, and music where stuff kind of gains a following online and um, really helps, you know, sales and uh, you know critical acclaim in the um, you know years that follow. Which this record definitely uh, has. It's uh, I believe in the the top ten of all time on Rage Your Music actually. Wow. And uh, again, this one has twenty two tracks, but forty five minutes, man. No song overstays. It's welcome. Um, you know just a really kind of a gritty sounding record in the production um go go check it out man some of some of the best rapping on top of that that uh, that you're ever going to hear all right well next up i got an album that I actually did a full album reaction with your sister to my chemical romance the black parade their third album it's on the rolling stone top 500 it's a rock album centering around the patient who is young mm -hmm. and who's dying of cancer it's about his passage of life and also all the memories that he has and the memories he will not make. So the highlights dead. Welcome to the Black Parade, of course. That, that piano, that, that piano, piano riff may be, may be the most iconic notes of this decade. It right very now. well may mm -hmm. be. Teenagers, famous last words. I don't love you. There's 14 songs. It is absolutely tremendous and could have come in even higher for me. What do you got, Trey? I'm going with a, a bit of a homer pick right here, but I do think it is uh, an album that is quality enough to be in the discussion of this list. Um, Desert Island Disc for me, brand new is The Devil and God Raging Inside Me. Um, man, it's a... Uh, uh, just a, a great blend of alt rock, emo, post hardcore. Jesse Lacey um, is fantastic on his vocals and uh, the passion and uh, just the, just the lyrics and storytelling in general. Uh, couple that with uh, Vin uh unbelievable guitar sections in this, and uh, it's a very concise record too. Um, so go uh, go check it out. Yeah, it's an excellent album, man. I had it high up on my list as well. All right, now another album that I absolutely love. Is this it by mm. The Strokes? Their debut. They wanted to come capture a simple sound, wasn't enhanced by the studio, which is a nice, I think that's what makes it kind of just a nice striking listen. It's 11 songs. It's only 36 minutes long. Julian Casablancas is tremendous mm -hmm. in here. 33 in the U.S., two in the U.K. Once again, the U.K. was ahead of us. And one of the highest rated albums I've ever come across on Metacritic, 91 out of 100, named as the best album of the year by Billboard, Entertainment Weekly, Enemy, and Time. Some days the highlight for me, like I said, there's 11 songs. It's a quick listen. Go check it out if you haven't already. No, I uh, I think that's going to be on a, a lot of uh, a lot of people's right. list right there, man. And uh, I'm so is this one. Yeah, I'm going to uh, Best Routine by Bjork. I think this is her best record, though. Um, you know, with Bjork, uh, she she has so many um, really acclaimed and just fantastic records that uh, you can't go wrong with most of them, man. Uh, here she's really uh, finding herself as her fourth record, kind of blending that. Art pop electronica sound um and man this the string arrangements on this record are among among the best of all time man just such a lush uh, gorgeous sounding album focused on love and um you know I, I think it has her best song undo um it's not up to you hidden place unison uh you, you can't go wrong with this one uh shout out shout out to the icelandic queen bjork right uh, right there yeah it would have not made my list <laughs> i liked it though i mean i, I think it is her best album all right, we're going to have a first here because this man's already been here twice, but <laughs> he did have the number one pick in three years, uh, three out of four years, the three first three albums he had. We got Kanye, Graduation, mm -hmm. third studio album, sold almost a million the first week. He had a different sound, Trey, because the year before this, I didn't know this at the time, but I found mm -hmm. this odd. He, he toured with U2, and he saw how their songs, how Bono could get the stadium rock going. So he wanted that. Mm -hmm. So he he did it. He, you know, did a little bit of change of sound, which, of course, when you do that, the critics and the fans sometimes have a little pushback uh, later on as people step back from it retrospectively. People really like it. Got away from the skits. 51 minutes, Grammy for best album. Stronger, I wonder, Homecoming, but a very strong album. No pun intended, right? Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> no, I, uh, I I like that uh, pick right there, and I got uh, the we we have two two picks yeah, remaining. You're about, to, you're about to get a and, lot of, a lot of votes. For this man, one. even though I'm not as high on this record, uh, you know, thinking it's the best uh, album of the decade. I mean, if it's still here at my ninth pick, I gotta go for it, man. My man, um, it'd have been here if we had um, fifty picks. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe for you. No, for but me, it would have been. I'm going Radiohead's Kid A right here. Their fourth record uh, went to number one on both sides of the pond. Rolling Stone, Time, Pitchfork, all name it as the album of the decade. Again, you know, the famous story uh, of one of the more uh, notable left turns kind yeah. of in music history coming off that rock based sound of OK Computer. Now going into the uh, just uh, a bit abstract uh, electronic type of sounds and exploring with that. But uh, even so, uh, there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, great, uh, great songs, even if maybe you're not big into their electronic type of work. Uh, I do love everything in its right place. Um, How to Disappear Completely, uh, one of their more um, morose yeah. type of tracks. Uh, Idiotech is uh, it's quite danceable. Motion picture soundtrack is uh, is great as well. Uh, full full album track by track review of this if you, you want to dive into it uh, a little further. Yeah, and, you know, for Radiohead, it's a tale of two bands for me. <laughs> I love the bands, OK Computer and Rainbows are some of my favorite albums. And I Kid A, Amnesiac, I just can't. I don't yeah. know. I tried, guys. <laughs> my ninth pick, Gaslight Anthem, the 59 sound. Uh, second album, Enemy 9 out of 10, Pitchfork 8.6 out of 10, a band that a lot of people have never heard of. Brian Fallon, their vocalist, is tremendous. Some mm. kind of just Americana rock on here, a little bit of punk tinge. Title track, Great Expectations, just all kinds of mm. fantastic albums on here. It, or songs on here. It's a quick listen start to finish. Go check it out if you've never checked them out. No, I, I, I like that pick as my final pick. Man, I could have gone a lot of different directions, yeah. but I, uh, I'm i like, you know what? I need a little little uh, folk uh, up in here. It's a great uh, pick. And I'm going with Fleet Fox's debut record from 2008. Um, their lead vocalist, Robin uh, uh, Pecknold, is uh, just wonderful, man. He He's one of the the, the great vocalists of, uh, of this decade. I, yeah. I saw him live uh, just a couple months back, and he sounded exactly like he does on the recording, which, you know, isn't always the case, but no. uh, uh, the harmonies on this record are just uh, fantastic. Uh, White Winter Hymnal uh, has, uh, you know, probably their most popular song, but uh, Your Protector and then my favorite Blue Ridge Mountains are also on this record. So uh, be sure to uh, give that a spin if you, you haven't already. Well, my last pick, and you said it, Trey, it's always hard, the last pick, mm -hmm. right? It's like, well, what am I going to leave off? When I'm on? We're going to have Marshall Mathers LP, Eminem, mm -hmm. his third album, recorded over a two-month period. Uh, a lot of retrospective, introspective lyricism. Includes his thoughts on his ride from rise from rags to riches, criticism of his music, and of course, a recurring theme: his estrangement from his family. Oh yeah, and his wife Kim. Uh, horrorcore and hardcore hip hop. You know, it's it's meant to be over the top. You know, mm -hmm. if he came out now, he'd probably get canceled. <laughs> but unbelievable success. Debuted at number one, staying there for eight <sighs> weeks. So 1.78 million copies in his first week. If you've ever looked at Eminem's chart success, you will Dude. be blown away. Yeah, I mean, even to this day, I mean, this is my favorite Eminem record. Uh, I really do like those first first three records. After that, he's very hit and miss for me. Yeah, but, me too. I mean, he's one of the top 10 selling artists of all time. I think yeah. he's, uh, yeah, eighth or eighth, ninth or ninth. But, uh, uh, you know, even to this day, his streaming success, I think he's still 12th in the world on Spotify. Um, so Eminem really, uh, you know, this was at the, the high of uh kind of his his powers i think so to speak and um i, I think uh I, I think in a 2000s best of list you gotta have it on here so i'm glad you you chose it at the end you do and if you're wondering which one this is it's got the real slim shady it's got the mm -hmm. way i am it's got him back it's got stan it's that one but yeah just a just a fantastic album so trade that does it for our top 10 albums of the 2000s which is 2000 to 2009 it's always awkward <laughs> naming this decade but most publications call it the 2000s <laughs> the next decade would be the 2010s so um, it was a lot of fun going through oh, yeah. this decade. No, it definitely was. And I, I think, uh, again, we saw this in the 90s, right, where more genres are starting to, yeah. to, to blossom. You have the, the golden age of hip hop, right, uh, with a, a lot of, uh, you know, just solid alternative releases. You know, pop was a pretty hit and miss for me in, uh, in the yeah, 90s. Very. I, I think the, the pop scene in the 2000s stepped up while, uh, you know, hip hop was really strong. Um, uh, um, a lot of really uh, good indie type of stuff yeah. as well. And so uh, I, I think it was a pretty strong decade um, for, for me all in all. I agree. Um, so we, of course, yeah, well, let us know your favorites. And um, we'll be back soon as we uh, go more decade left, my to man. the 2010s and uh, going to be kicking that that off with 2010, which is a really strong year of music for how weak uh, maybe 2009 was. So yes, exactly. Looking forward to that. And uh, until next time, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Happy listening. And we will see you. <laughs>